whole way through. See you next time on The Chase Australia. The state calls happy hour a big lift in restrictions, another step out of COVID lockdown. Tonight, 50 people inside pubs, clubs, restaurants and cafes. The new rules, but not everyone's happy. Bungle or Bonanza, the government's big accounting mess up, the $60 billion JobKeeper miscalculation. Released, then re-arrested. The Greenacre driver now facing charges over that crash. Target to shut dozens of stores, hundreds of jobs lost across the city and in the bush. An East Coast low brings snow and wild surf, a rocky ride for a world champ who snapped his board off Avalon. The milestone for Sydney's tallest building, and now Crown has positions vacant. And Cody Walker and South's penalised by the NRL over his involvement in that street fight. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Michael Usher. Good evening. After this week's cautious start, the Premier has declared it's once again happy hour in New South Wales, with pubs, clubs and restaurants to allow 50 patrons from June 1. The move will see thousands of hospitality staff rehired, but there are strict new rules with authorities to throw the book at venues that overstep the mark. At East Sydney Institution Bill and Tony's, a power lunch with the Premier to toast the state's brave next step. Now it's our happy hour. It's time to wine and dine. After weeks pushing caution and lockdowns, no one was expecting this. Pubs, clubs, cafes and restaurants able to open for 50 patrons at a time. An important, critical and big step from the 1st of June. And not just 50 per venue, 50 per restaurant in the venue. So a club with six restaurants means 300 patrons. Gaming also allowed. We are taking a mighty big step. But it comes with strict rules. 1.5 metre distancing at all times, no dancing, pubs only able to operate by table service, no standing or lingering at the bar. Nobody will be able to be standing up in these venues. You have to be seated at a table, even if it's a pub. So if we see any cowboys out there, watch out. Small bars with no restaurants can't open. Also, to help contact trace outbreaks... Each person who goes in would also give their name and phone number. Complicated and confusing, perhaps, but for clubs, it's a lifeline. For 63,000 stood down employees. This is just such a wonderful announcement for millions of people, and we could not be happier with the New South Wales government. At Bill and Tony's, they couldn't be happier. Doors are open. Coffee's ready, the food will be ready. The policy shift is a stunning turnaround for the Berejiklian government. The driver, jobs. We can't wait until September. We need to have as much of the economy going right now. Also throwing questions at the press conference today, publican Warren Livingston, we met last week, stunned by the news. Yeah, very much so. I mean, it's kind of come out of the blue, but you've got to take it. But he also warns the breweries may have been caught short on supply. We could be open, but we could have no beer. We'll have to see how we go. And Chris Reason joins us now from the Star Casino. Chris, good evening to you. So venue operators are both excited and confused tonight, is that right? Yeah, good evening to you, Michael. Look, the government itself admits that the policy is still being refined and is evolving, in their words. The ALP calls it confusing and chaotic. It has to be said that there is a stunning lack of detail and clarity about this policy. Even as late as this afternoon, I was getting messages from press secretaries offering running corrections and changes. Here at the Star Casino, they approached the government this afternoon asking how many uh, pokey machines they could run. For the moment, they've been told it's 50 per restaurant, but that could change too. They're meeting again on Monday. Uh, a lot of people have grave concerns, Michael, this policy is simply going too far too soon and that on a day we've seen three more positive cases announced and an 80 year old dying at Concord Hospital. Michael. All right, Chris Reason reporting from Piermont tonight, thank you. Well it is the biggest budget blunder in Australian history. An administrative mix-up in the federal government's JobKeeper scheme means it's costing taxpayers $60 billion less than it was budgeted for. The Treasurer tonight resisting pressure to expand the scheme with the money left over. As far as accounting errors go, it's a doozy. A $60 billion bungle. This is a mistake you could have seen from space. Overestimating the number of workers covered by the JobKeeper program and the cost by almost double, leaving the tax office speechless. The 
Look, I... The result of application errors by about 1,000 businesses, half instead of putting one for the number of employees lodging 1,500, the amount of the JobKeeper payment. Wildly inflating the number of people covered, all automatically approved, the error discovered by a tax office review, revising down the number covered from 6.5 million to 3.5 and, and the cost from $130 billion to 70. Importantly, uh, there was no money that was sent out that shouldn't have been sent out. The process was administered by bureaucrats, but under our system of accountability, the buck always stops with the minister, Josh Frydenberg. Or in this case, the 60 billion bucks. The idea that we will ever again listen to Josh Frydenberg and think that he has any credibility at all is gone. Mr Frydenberg deflecting. Well, the tax office and the Treasury, the ATO and the, uh, and the Treasury. I'm not blaming Treasury and I'm not blaming the ATO. The upside, the government suddenly had $60 billion in its pocket it didn't know it had. This is good news for the taxpayer. But won't use it to include short-term casuals and entertainers left out of JobKeeper. This is not an invitation to spend more money. Labor's view of what it is... This is an absolute shambles. And political editor Mark Riley joins us now live from Canberra. Mark, as you said at the start of your story, it's a doozy and there's good and bad in this. Yeah, Michael, the good is that it saves taxpayers a lot of money. It shows the damage to business isn't as deep as the government thought and it means the so-called cliff that workers will face when the JobKeeper payment finishes won't be as steep, but that's where the good ends. It also means the policy decisions that Scott Morrison and his ministers have taken have been based on wildly inaccurate advice. Who didn't think it was strange that a corner shop or a carpenter was claiming 1,500 employees? It blows a huge hole in the government's reputation as economic managers. I've seen some pretty big bungles, Michael, in three decades in this place, but this one is a rolled gold stuff-up. There you go. All right, Mark Riley, Canberra, thank you. To some breaking news now, and a child has been hit by a truck at Picton in Sydney southwest. Emergency services are on the scene there in Argyle Street to treat the five-year-old. It's understood the young boy's gone into cardiac arrest. He's expected to be driven to Liverpool Hospital when he's stabilised. We'll have more on this unfolding story as we get it. A man who slammed his car into a shop in Greenacre yesterday is right now being questioned by police. He was arrested for the second time this afternoon over the smash which put 10 people in hospital. Investigators now trying to work out what went wrong. Sabri Nasser, the man behind the wheel in Greenacre yesterday when 14 people's lives flashed before their eyes. The 51-year-old was arrested and taken to hospital for medical tests at 2am. Police let him go. Then 12 hours later, he was arrested again. New security video shows the whole incident lasted only a minute. His Marone SUV ramming other cars at traffic lights, then pushing them forward before ploughing into Hijab House. NASA now accused of causing carnage during one of the holiest times in the Muslim calendar. He appeared emotionless behind the wheel. A doctor working next door was first on scene and tried to speak with him. He was not uh, injured. There was no blood in him. I didn't see he was screaming or asking for help. He was just sitting in shock. I think he lost control of the car rather than like he had a heart attack or a medical condition. His alleged victims escaped with only minor injuries, the worst a broken ankle. Tarek Houch's sister was pinned underneath the rubble. So to me it was uh, a miracle that people survived. Our store caters to younger customers and so of course for a young person to have to deal with it's a lot more difficult. Detectives have been questioning NASA all afternoon and are expected to lay charges of negligent driving overnight. It's understood doctors are yet to find anything conclusive on why this would have happened. So determining whether or not this was a medical episode will now be up to the courts. Andrew Denny, 7 News. Up to 167 Target stores, more than half of all their outlets are to be closed or converted to Kmarts, with the loss of up to 1,300 jobs. Target's owner says the change has been looming. Coronavirus just brought it on. The store, marketed with a bullseye, took a direct hit today. I am surprised, but a lot of those things are happening at the moment. It's cheap, it's convenient, great service, always liked it. A favourite discounter with shoppers, but as a business, badly off target. 
Target is an unprofitable business. It's been subject to an enormous amount of change and competition. Parent group West Farmers deciding to shut down up to 75 Target stores, another 90 converted to its Kmart brand. Some staff will be redeployed, others won't be so lucky. Between 1,000 and 1,300 team members. 50 of the targets disappearing are in country areas. It just shows to show they don't give a rats about us. Uh, and you know what? I think Australians should vote with their wallets and not go near them. Unions and the opposition say boycotts won't help anyone. I'm not sure what uh, a boycott for West Farmers means except people not going into stores and further job losses. I guess that's COVID, isn't it? It's not COVID. No. Target's bosses say the coronavirus has accelerated these cutbacks, but it certainly hasn't caused them. They say the brand still has a big future, but plenty of work to do. Strong growth is expected for its Kmart and online sales. Over the next year, I'm confident we'll create more jobs for Australians. Nationally, Target stores will be more than halved. Most closures slated to happen next year. Chris Ma, seven years. Another state government planning blitz is promising to deliver a $5 billion boost to the economy and more than 15,000 jobs. But there are major concerns about the cost blowout as community opposition grows to a rejected residential development that's now back on the agenda. They thought they'd already won. What they have done is they've betrayed us. The state government has betrayed us. Opponents of a residential development on this West Pennant Hill site forced to fight again. Veering between deep sadness and quite deep anger. Council rejected developer Mervac's plan for 600 homes in November after receiving 4,000 objections. But the state government today added the project to its planning fast track list. How dare they do it? Mervac says it's committed to protecting existing forest on the site and is also hoping to have another project on the government's list approved, part of the $2.6 billion Mamre Road Industrial Precinct, creating 5,000 jobs. This is potentially a really significant project for Western Sydney. In all, 24 projects have been identified, more than $5 billion worth of investment, potentially creating more than 15,000 jobs. We've got to be convinced that there are broader public benefits as well as private benefits. The latest list also includes the Sydney Fish Market's redevelopment, already $500 million over the initial budget, and a new Tweed Hospital. Today's figures revealing its cost has blown out by $90 million. The community misses out because of this government's financial mismanagement. Just one of 24 proposals on the government's first shortlist was rejected. The people here fear planning is not just being fast-tracked, they're being railroaded. It's a rubber stamp. A final decision will be made within four weeks. Alex Hart, 7 News. Four men have been arrested over a drug plot that would have seen 80,000 ecstasy tablets hit our streets. The bus kicked off during a routine traffic stop in Lemire, which led to a number of raids in Sydney and in Melbourne. These arrests are significant. The quantity of drugs in, in terms of um, street value is worth in excess of $1.7 million. All three men were refused bail to face court in July. The fourth man was arrested at Parkley Correctional Centre, charged with supplying the syndicate with firearms. President Trump has been slammed as a petulant child after breaking state law by refusing to publicly wear a mask while touring a Ford factory in Michigan. Donald Trump did wear one, but only away from the cameras, explaining openly the reasons why and insisting he's virus-free. With campaign rallies on hold, this was the next best thing. I'm proud to be an American. As of this week, the beating heart of the American auto industry is back open for business. The president touring a Ford factory in the battleground state of Michigan, wearing a mask behind the scenes, but defying state law and company orders going unmasked the rest of the visit. I didn't want to give the press the pleasure of seeing it. The president is like a petulant child uh, who refuses to follow the rules. And I have to say, this is no joke. Donald Trump confirmed he'd already been tested today. The results? I tested positively toward negative, right? So. No, I tested uh, perfectly this morning, meaning, meaning I tested negative. Americans are returning to work in all 50 states, but... The virus is not gone. The virus is still out there. Hospitals in Alabama's capital, full. If you're from Montgomery and you need an ICU bed, 
you're in trouble. The president says he'd happily work with other countries to fast track vaccine development and has now made one of the biggest investments yet, pumping a billion dollars into a vaccine program at the UK's Oxford University. If you'd said that to me a month ago, that all of that would happen in a month, I'd have thought that was wild. <laughs> Fantastic. So, yeah, we're thrilled. Human trials started last month. Research is now waiting to see if participants develop antibodies. The results expected in two to six months. In New York, Ashley Mullaney, 7 News. Alan Jones is considering legal action against his employer Channel 9 over an editorial in today's Sydney Morning Herald, accusing him of, quote, encouraging sexual violence. The newspaper, owned by Nine, has now changed its online edition and issued a correction. The broadcaster is due to sign off from his 2GB breakfast show at the end of next week. We have exclusive pictures tonight as a city skyscraper reaches a construction milestone. Now at its highest point, the new Crown Tower has become Sydney's tallest building. The next phase, a major recruitment drive at a time workers need it the most. After years of construction, Crown Tower at Barangaroo has reached its highest point. Today's ceremony, the culmination of four years' work. At 275 metres and 71 storeys, it takes the title as Sydney's tallest building. It was a disused, you know, refilled land site. To look at it now, it is spectacular and it ranks right up there on a global scale as one of the greatest precincts in the world. And it's not just construction. The fit-out of hotel rooms is 90% complete, along with the foreshore boardwalk. The reality is you only have one chance to make a first impression. The project will be finished in the next few months with the hotel on track to open its doors in December. And that means from next month, Crown will be hiring the company to begin a massive recruitment drive at a time the city needs it most. 2,000 new jobs, there's about 700 different roles, so obviously a big focus on hospitality. Construction uh, was the driving force of the New South Wales economy before the pandemic, uh, and it's going to be the driving force out of it. Crown admits it is prepared for the possibility international travel will still be banned next year. Obviously the big opportunity for us is when the international market opens back up. Cameron Price, 7 News. South Sydney's been dealt a huge blow tonight with star playmaker Cody Walker copping a two-game suspension. Let's go live to Chief League reporter Michelle Bishop now. Michelle, good evening to you. A big setback for the Bunnies. Good evening, Michael. Cody Walker was informed late this afternoon that he won't be taking part in the restart of the competition. The first two matches, crucial ones against the reigning premiers, the Roosters and the Melbourne Storm. Now, the integrity unit f uh, found him guilty of bringing the game into disrepute um, in following his involvement in a street fight in uh, Casino, his hometown, last year. Uh, and that's despite the police not charging him. Souths have been fined $20,000 for not properly d uh, disclosing the incident. And of course, Michael, he will have, as well as the club, five days re to respond to that breach notice. Michael. OK, Michelle Bishop at League Headquarters, thank you. It was a rough day in the surf, even if you are an 11-time world champion. Now, right there, that's American Kelly Slater at Avalon today. His board snapped in two. For the fans who'd gathered to watch him, he played a little game. Whoever guessed the lucky number got the board as a souvenir. Locals say they hung around to watch him get a barrel not long after. Sally Barry's here now. Sal, good evening to you. Have we seen the last of that wild weather? Well, not quite, Michael. Right now there is a deep low brewing offshore with dangerous surf forecast this weekend. Waves are building right now with southern facing beaches set to be the hardest hit. There was sandbagging at Collaroy today with damaging winds gusting up to 90 kilometres an hour across the Illawarra and Royal National Park. The east coast low has moved away from the coast, so it's keeping most of the rain out to sea tonight. But it has helped drop temperatures with a promising start to the ski season on the cards. We saw flurries in the Blue Mountains, Central Tablelands and also Southern Highlands early this morning. Right now there are just a few showers skimming the coast. Uh, it's a little bit chilly at Katoomba at the moment. Five degrees feels more like zero at the moment, that wind chill factor. But of course I'll be back a little later with Sydney's full forecast to tell you if this rain is sticking around. All right, terrific Sally, thank you. A service station worker has been left traumatised during an armed robbery in Newcastle after the break. The moment an attendant was threatened with a sword and baseball bat. Also, the head-on crash that sent a driver to hospital, so who's to blame there? China's tough new stance on Hong Kong and why some are calling it the end. 
why the Duke and Duchess need to brush up on their bingo lingo. And soon in sport, clubs counting down to kick off and another South Premiership star ready for a comeback. Hello, Daniel. I have been watching you. Yeah, I played footy from Gold Coast. Oh, no, I see. So I got sacked. Oh. Was lucky enough to get picked up by Carlton. They sacked me again. They may have sacked you, but I have chosen you. I gotta be me. Have you got what it takes to be the last one in my house? I didn't really believe I could play footy, but I believe I can win this. I am Big Brother. I gotta Who wins? You decide. Harvey Norman, your premium Optus dealer. Receive a $700 Harvey Norman gift card when you sign up to a new service on the Optus $65 per month SIM-only plan for 24 months with 80 gigabytes of data for use in Oz. That's right. Sign up to a new service on the $65 per month 24-month Optus SIM-only plan and you'll receive a $700 Harvey Norman gift card. Offer ends June 30. New services only, not available with other offers. Harvey Norman, your premium Optus dealer. Hyundai's end of financial year sale is on. Get great value across our eye-catching range. Like the Hyundai i30 hatch with the confidence of a seven-year warranty. And end of financial year bonuses on selected SUVs, including the Hyundai Tucson. And seven-seat petrol V6 Hyundai Santa Fe. Hyundai's end of financial year sale. See it to believe it. with more ways to help you, giving you even more reasons to smile wherever you are. Talk to me or your broker today. Prices are here to stay. Aldi. Good. Different. The next Garley Autumn Sale is on now. Save on a great range of quality furniture for a limited time. The next Garley Autumn Sale. On now. For making sense of a changing world. For understanding what's next for the edge you need. The Australian for the informed Australian. Security vision has captured a head-on crash after a driver ran a red light in Western Sydney. Both vehicles were left crumpled as they collided at a North Mead intersection around 10 p.m. The 25-year-old driver of the Suzuki Swift who wanted to turn right was taken to Westmead Hospital. Police are still investigating but say neither driver had been drinking. Police have appealed for dashcam or security vision in hopes of tracing two thugs who robbed a service station near Newcastle early today. The thieves menaced the attendant with a baseball bat and a sword, as seen in these exclusive security pictures. Right before 2am, the early morning quiet at this Newcastle servo is rudely broken by two armed thugs. It's alarming for the lone attendant as so the two men, hooded and masked, storm his service station, leaping over the counter, one armed with a baseball bat, the other with a samurai sword. They force him to unlock the cash drawer and rip it to the floor. While the batter stands guard, the swordsman repeats the exercise at another cash point. Then it's back over the counter, but not without a final threat aimed at the attendant. He's immediately on the phone to triple zero, but the men have escaped. Last seen walking away. The best clues, their athletic gear. One in Nike, the other Adidas. And that sword looks rusty, bent. The handle may be wrapped in electrical tape, but still deadly. While no one was injured in this robbery, police are concerned the pair, now flush with cash, will strike again. And armed with those sorts of weapons, well, they certainly hope anyone who recognises them comes forward before they target 
another unarmed service station attendant. Evan Batten, 7 News. Fresh protests have kicked off in Hong Kong as China plans new laws to crack down on opposition activity. China says it's about national security, but legislators argue the move will strip autonomy given to Hong Kong when China took back control of the territory in 1997. I just want to say to the international community that this is the end of Hong Kong. This is the end of one country, two system. Make no mistake about it. It follows those large-scale and often violent demonstrations that we saw last year. The driver who took this video of a shooting in the United States has been charged with murder. William Bryan filmed as a father and son armed themselves, chased down and shot an unarmed jogger. Prosecutors allege Bryan pursued and tried to block the runner's path. The father and son have already been charged. Bryan denies that he was involved. There's been a round of royal bingo in Wales when the Cambridges popped into an aged care home as virtual hosts. William and Kate took their online drop-ins to a whole new level, but the feedback on the ground is that they have a little work to do. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> With a new prop, the Cambridges call in as the Duke and Duchess of bingo. Ball. Catherine's going to pick out the first ball. OK. So the first number is five and eight. 58. One little duck, number two. Almost like they've done this before. Eight and seven, 87. Six and two, tickety-boo. On a royal roll until Joan emerged the winner, and a very honest one at that. How did we do a bingo? Was it okay? Yeah, very good. It wasn't as good as it should have been. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try and do a bit better at bingo next time. It's all part of the changing royal life. They can't visit, but regularly check in with people isolated and health workers struggling. They're desperate to see you smiling and they can't see it behind a mask. It, it's sad. It's very hot. It's in all of it, yeah. <laughs> but the morale in the home is lovely. Made a little lovelier by knowing someone is listening and a royal hug is coming soon. Everyone needs a hug, Emma. Very important. They do, they do sir. <laughs> Emma Dallymore, 7 News. Well, happy hours coming back for venues across the state after the break while some are celebrating. Many others say it's not good enough. The cruise ship ban extended, so when could sailing resume? The good news for Boris Johnson over his dealings with an American businesswoman and the guide dog trainers given thanks for their work in lockdown. That's next. House renovated is like a golden ticket <laughs> to the rest of your life. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Right. Oh. In the transformation of the year. This is a house of our dreams. Yeah. Oh my god. It's all for mum. too much for one person to have. <laughs> It'll be the Hampton-style home of her dreams. I love everything. Mum's dream home will be revealed. House Rules, Sunday at 7. Right now, businesses are facing their toughest challenges. Get advice and inspiration from other local businesses on cash flow, marketing and managing staff. Get the support you need at businessaustralia.com. When we look back on these days, let's remember what we found. Because when all we have is time, what we find is each other. We're here to support you. And we can. Together. During the Nick Scarly Autumn Sale, the Contemporary Timber Aches Dining Table was $17.90, now $11.90. That's a great saving on quality furniture. Only at Nick Scarly, on now. Being stuck at home doesn't have to mean being stuck for things to do. Because if you take a look around, there's inspiration everywhere. Ryobi One Plus. One Plus U equals endless possibilities. Available at bunnings.com.au. I drive a lot. I build stuff. Pull things, push things, and I hit things. And then I carry stuff. What do you do again? I drive a Hilux. Australia's number one selling vehicle, four years running. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. You know you'll make a great mum one day. 
I had the weirdest cravings when I was pregnant with you. Pickles and ice cream. Amy has always helped Australians get back on the road. But now, more than ever, it's vital those on the front line get to where they need to be. That's why we're now offering free roadside assist to all doctors, nurses, hospital staff and first responders Australia-wide until the end of the year. Amy and non-Amy customers. Here's to supporting the everyday heroes who are supporting the rest of us. To take advantage of this offer, go to amy.com.au. Lucky you're with Amy. I'm just going to take you back to that breaking news now that we said at the start of the show, the accident in Picton, where a young child has been taken to Liverpool Hospital after being hit by a truck. We have new vision in there from the scene and from our, our helicopter. Now, we understand it happened just after 5pm this afternoon. Understood the five-year-old was wedged between two vehicles and we're learning that he went into cardiac arrest, uh, being quickly taken to Liverpool Hospital. We'll have more on the condition of the child as we get it. The ban on cruise ships entering Australian waters will remain in place for a further three months. Border Force today extended the restrictions on ships capable of carrying more than 100 passengers until at least mid-September. There are currently no cruise liners left off our coast after the Ruby Princess set sail for the Philippines last month. At least 22 deaths have been linked to that ship. Well, customers may be celebrating tonight, but the Premier's decision to ease restrictions on pubs, clubs and restaurants has left business owners divided. Many are relieved, but larger venues say they'll lose money if they open, despite having more than enough space to observe social distancing. It's go again at Cubby House in Carl Bay. Green light. You're in. Thank you. The news to toast. Social distancing all the way. 50 people can soon fill empty seats for them a return to normality. The phone was going wild today that we've got 50. And I was like, I thought it was a joke. It's almost Christmas come early for us. Just five months old, the restaurant had to lay off staff. Soon, they'll be back. Yeah, it's been tough, but at least now there's, you know, right at the end of the tunnel. A game changer too for empty local clubs. Fantastic, bring them on. Look at the area. Uh, so we can accommodate a lot of people. It will mean big players which shut down will be able to open again. We are almost ready to go. We'll definitely be ready by next week. Still, for some like Club Kirribilli, restrictions have not been relaxed enough. The one size fits all doesn't fit everyone. Opening even for 50 people would mean losing tens of thousands of dollars a week. Meanwhile, struggling venues we spoke to have been left wondering why private functions of 50 people like weddings are not allowed. We are all struggling at the moment. Like we can fit only 10 people. We cancel a lot of function. Yeah. We can fit here up to 180 people. Other businesses keen for the next breath of relief. Open up the beauty parlours next. Serena Andaloro, 7 News. A man accused of stabbing his wife to death has been taken back to hospital less than 24 hours after being charged with murder. Justice Health will, will, will conduct a mental health assessment. Has he said anything to you about how he's holding up or uh, anything about his wife at all? No further comments. Detectives say the couple had spoken with police a month ago. Baltej Lalna was issued with a restraining order, but he still allowed him to live with his wife. A man's face caught charged with assaulting an elderly woman near a medical centre in Western Sydney. The 69-year-old was heading to an appointment in Seven Hills last month when the man allegedly directed her to a nearby property and indecently assaulted her. The 26-year-old man today pleaded not guilty and was granted conditional bail to reappear in court next month. Boris Johnson's been cleared of any criminal wrongdoing after an alleged affair with an American businesswoman. The claims date back to his time as Mayor of London, but the British Prime Minister says he's done nothing wrong. Jennifer Archuri was never shy in promoting her links with the then Mayor of London. You like hanging out with us, right? I do. I'm always <laughs> happy to hang out at InnoTech. Prompting questions over whether Boris Johnson used his position to benefit her. Nearly a quarter of a million dollars in grants and positions on overseas trade trips promoting London. Together they visited Singapore, Malaysia, New York and Tel Aviv. The American businesswoman was asked this last November. Was it an affair? 
I'm not going to answer that question, but as you can tell, there was a very special relationship there. An independent review has found there may have been an intimate relationship and he should have declared it, finding evidence to suggest that those officers making decisions about sponsorship monies thought that there was a close relationship between Mr Johnson and Ms Archuri and this influenced their decision making. The former model and DJ ran a tech firm but has always denied she did anything wrong. Boris Johnson maintains claims of impropriety are politically motivated, unfounded and untrue, but he still faces a separate review into his time as mayor. Examining whether he acted with honesty and integrity. In London, Hugh Whitfeld, 7 News. The lockdown isn't just changing the way we work, it's also transformed the way guide dogs are being trained. Thousands of volunteers have taken training puppies into their homes and today they were thanked for their extraordinary efforts. Good boy. At 18 months old, Brian is training well to become a fully qualified guide dog after leaving his puppy raiser family when he turned one. We had already said goodbye to Brian and handed him back, uh, but then we, we got the phone call saying that everything had changed because of COVID. The lockdown has forced the closure of guide dog training facilities. Now an army of volunteers has leapt to their aid. We have thousands and thousands of volunteers for Guide Dogs Australia and over 1,000 of those are puppy raisers alone. Some of them caught up today on Zoom from around the country to celebrate Volunteer Week. We've had Elliot since uh, he was about nine weeks old, which was July last year, and uh, he has been an absolute joy. While trainers have had to invent protocols to work remotely and safely with their charges. We may disinfect a gate and open the gate and then get the dog from a yard. Orson and Brian are this far apart because even though social distancing only applies to humans, it always applies to guide dogs. Often that's hard to tell when they're out playing without the harness on. But if you see a guide dog, you should try and keep your dog at least 1.5 metres away. It costs $50,000 and takes two years to train these workhorses. He's actually the most laid back, gentle, beautiful soul. Brian Seymour, 7 News. After the worst ever monthly decline in retail sales, Maya is leading the charge out. After the break, the department store's plans to welcome customers again. It is now a good time to get a bargain on a new or used car? The development that brought an end to the fight over Bob Hawke's will. And I'll have details on the dangerous conditions forecast from the East Coast Low soon. I'm your dad. Why'd you choose now to come and find me? You're the second me for a ride. When he finds out the true reason his dad's here, it could break his heart. You need to tell him what's going on. If you don't tell him, I will. Home and Away, next week on 7. Let's do it, baby. Strong, mate. <laughs> Make this Saturday one to remember. Get best tote on all exotics on every race across all Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide races. Points bet. Some people might see superannuation funds as a sea of sameness. But some super members belong to a fund that's dedicated only to them. Sun Super's stress-tested investment strategies have delivered strong long-term returns that have beaten the industry average over three, five, seven, and ten years. Join our 1.4 million members and feel the strength of Sun Super. Om Tanke isn't just a word. It's a lens through which you can view the world and see things differently. It's a new perspective. A considerate, more caring one. Om Tanke shines a brighter light on the things that really matter. And that helps us focus on making those things better. On making the world better. For everyone. Om Tanke. We welcome you to try it. Volvo. With Belong, you get 10 gigs of mobile data for $25 a month. That's 10 gigs of family time. 10 gigs of scrolling through memory lane. 10 gigs of staycations. Or 10 gigs of catching up with the family. Plus, unlimited international calls and texts to selected countries for $5 extra. We all spend family time differently. Together, we're different. Belong. Even remotely. 
Our home loan specialists can zoom into your home to help you save on your next loan. Hello Fresh, delicious meals delivered to your door with pre-portioned fresh ingredients. Now you can focus on what's really important. Order your box today. Hello Fresh, inspiration delivered. Let's do it, baby. It's on, mate. Make this Saturday one to remember. Get best tote on all exotics on every race across all Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane and Adelaide races. Points bet. Let's have a look at the markets now. The ASX 200 ended the week in red, closing down 53 points. Losses by the big four banks and the mining sector dragged the index lower for a second day. West Farmers also inched lower after announcing that major restructure to Target and Kmart stores. The dollar, there it is, buying 65.17 US cents. Fuel prices are continuing to go down slightly across Sydney. The average, $1.7.9. We did find regular unleaded as cheap as 92.9 at Villawood. After being closed for almost two months, all Meyer stores across the country are set to reopen next week. Several Sydney branches have already resumed trading, with Blacktown, East Gardens and Charlestown opening today. The retailer says it's stepping up safety and cleaning measures. The decision follows the worst ever monthly decline in retail sales in April. The family battle over Bob Hawke's estate has been settled out of court. The late Prime Minister's will had been challenged by youngest daughter Rosalind Dillon, who made a $4 million claim alleging her father's political gains left her broken. Ms Dillon claims she was raped by a Hawke ally in the 80s and that her father urged her not to go to police. Most of the multi-million dollar estate was left to widow Blanche Del Puget, who's now battling cancer. If you're in the market for a new or used car, now may be the time to buy. Dealers have been taking a battering during the pandemic, forcing them to slash prices. But that could be about to change as more people shy away from crowded public transport. This is just one of David Vincent's six car yards. Normally he'd sell 60 vehicles a week. During the height of the pandemic, he was lucky to sell 10. The inquiry just literally stopped. We didn't expect it to happen um, as dramatically and as, as quickly as it did. With bills to pay and cars gathering dust, the dealership's been forced to slash prices by up to 15%. A lot of these cars have been reduced to what we paid for them pre-COVID. And with supply outstripping demand, used car values have also taken a tumble. I think with sales, the drop, you know, as significant as they are, there is a, there is a supply, you know, of vehicles there. In fact, April was a month the automotive industry and new car dealerships in particular would rather forget. Sales fell almost 50% compared to the same time last year. But while the pandemic has hit the industry hard, it could work to its advantage. Carsales.com says its own survey of almost 3,000 Australians shows we're more inclined to want to avoid busy public transport. It found 60% of people who don't own a car are now more likely to consider buying one. They want to uh, use their transport, their mode of transport, as a sort of mobile quarantine, basically. Whatever the reasons, dealers have their fingers crossed for a speedy recovery. Tim Hatfield, 7 News. Schools are getting back to normal. The next step will be getting kids playing sports again. But what will that look like? From empty sidelines to showers before the game and what parents think about it. Don't miss that story soon here on 7 News. But first, Jim Wilson's here with Sport. Jim, good evening to you. Good day, Michael. Another South Premiership star ready for a, a comeback. He is, Michael. Good evening to you. Evening, everyone. Coming up, Ben Teo is set for a return after a five-year absence from Rugby League. We'll chat to him next. While at his former club, there's plenty happening tonight. More on Cody Walker's suspension, while Jimmy the Jet is set to return to Redfern. And the Swannies and the Giants unite as the countdown to the AFL's restart gathers momentum. That's next. Steamy, saucy, spaghetti. Bowl. Transform how your family does it. Save some money too. New Better Homes, next on 7. The Beacon Frenzy Sale is now on with 20% off all lights and fans. Update your home this winter and get 20% off every single light and fan this week only. Hurry, the Beacon Frenzy Sale ends Sunday. Maltesers, the lighter way to enjoy chocolate. Same shirt. Nice shirt, Tom. Thanks. 
I'm getting that shirt. I'm coming with you. Tall, so unique. Thank you. As this year continues to be a challenging one for all of us, NRMA Insurance remains dedicated to helping Australians. We've introduced a customer help program with a range of relief options to assist customers currently in need. If you're experiencing financial hardship, call us today to find out how we can tailor help options for you. Fine. Melissa? Thank you. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's a St. George thing. <laughs> Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. For making sense of a changing world, for understanding what's next. For the edge you need. The Australian for the informed Australian. Some people might see superannuation funds as a sea of sameness. But some super members belong to a fund that's dedicated only to them. Some super's stress-tested investment strategies have delivered. Well, he's, you know, remorseful for, for everything that's happened, so, um, no, we've left it there. He's still the same. He's he's been a pest off the field, and you know when when we come on the field, he's um, you know he's leading from the front. Players say the twenty thousand dollar fine for keeping the casino street fight secret won't change their relationship with coach Wayne Bennett. Wayne's Wayne's big thing is about being honest, so um, I don't think that's going to have much effect on on anything that we do here. South Sydney has five days to respond to head office over the $20,000 fine. It's certainly been a tough couple of weeks for the Bunnies, but today they finally received some good news. James Roberts is out of rehab and is expected at training tomorrow. He's a chance to play against the Premiers next Friday night. From all reports that he's, he's um, in a good space mentally, which is um, you know, really good for him. And while referees are yet to reach a final compromise with the NRL, highly respected whistleblower Bill Harrigan says the dispute was an unnecessary distraction and a waste of money on the legal front. We want the game to start back on Thursday night. We're doing everything, or the NRL's doing everything they can to get it back on there. We don't need this hurdle. Let it be, get on with the paddock and do your negotiations later on. Michelle Bishop, 7 News. He left the game after tasting Premiership success with the Bunnies and now Ben Teo is set for a return to the NRL. With Super Rugby on hold, the 33-year-old is yet to be officially released by the Sunwolves, but he's back training with the Broncos. Still cutting an intimidating figure after five years away playing rugby, Big Ben is back, lurking with intent. It just reminds me of the old days. Uh... And I enjoy the hard training and, you know, it's going to benefit me whatever I, I do next. The 33-year-old dual internationals outside the Broncos bubble for now. I'm still employed, you know, I'm still uh, a Sunwolf at the moment and um, still ho hopeful that Rugby Union will get going. But Japan Sunwolves are set to give up on their last year in Super Rugby, unable to join Australian teams by July. Tio's last of eight NRL seasons was South's 2014 Premiership year. Since then, he's earned 18 tests for England and the Lions. The Broncos want him back. You know, I'll, I'll see what happens. The Tigers are just wild about Harry Grant. He's um, fitting in really well and um, all the boys love him. I'm sure he'll, he'll push for that um, probably Maroons jersey, I think, this year. Yeah, Garn's got no idea. <laughs> the Storm sent Cameron Smith's 22-year-old understudy to the Tigers for experience. He's always there for a phone call if I, if I need any help. So, yeah, it's been pretty good from, uh, from the goat. Master V Apprentice will be something special. Around 19, that was the first one I looked at. <laughs> Matt Carmichael, 7 News. Swans players say they'll have no problem jumping on board with the GWS Giants to get playing again. They finished their first week back at training today and are expected to share charter flights with their Sydney rivals when the competition resumes on June 11. Oh, yeah, it'll be probably something we're not used to, but um, as I said before, I think everyone's be pretty keen to get footy going again. Will Hayward's in the group, learning from the great Stevie J, Steve Johnson. They can start contact training next week and expect the new fixture to be revealed on Monday. Well, Australia has lost the legend of a golden era of ten tennis, the charismatic champion 
Ashley Cooper. He won three of his four Grand Slam singles titles in a glorious 1958. Cooper also won four doubles Grand Slams and was a Davis Cup great. More than 3,000 people jostle for a glimpse of his wedding to Miss Australia, Helen Wood, in 1959. After playing, Cooper became a cherished innovator as an administrator of the game. He died today after a long illness, aged 83, a legend of Australian sport. One of the most promising racehorses in the country will headline seven Saturday racing coverage tomorrow. Chris Waller's boom three-year-old Canane, a dominant winner of the Frank Packer Plate during the championships in Sydney, is the hot favourite for the gun scene classic at Eagle Farm in Brisbane, which begins their winter racing carnival. I guess he's got to go to another level. Um, you know, what he beat in the Frank Packer Plate, we're not sure. Seven Saturday racing coverage, headed up by Bruce McAvaney, includes all the action from the Ramwick, Flemington and Eagle Farm meetings. Well, life in lockdown has allowed athletes and some up-and-comers time to hone their skills. Have a look at this, everyone. Five-year-old Californian Caden Kessler, who's really made, of it, made the most of it with his baseball pitching, he's become a sensation in the US. Don't try this at home, folks. Don't try it at home, folks. Despite his young age, his pitching is even strong enough to break a watermelon, melon, earning him a sweet treat. Gee, I'll tell you what, Dad was brave. Put it very brave. Got the mask on and he's got he's got the witch's hat. I'm thinking, brave dad. No, I'd be worried my boys are a little <laughs> lower than that. <laughs> he's got he's a brave dad. <laughs> he's got a good arm, hasn't he? Indeed. He's indeed. I'm not gonna go where you went. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> well, school kids will soon be back on the sports ground, but coronavirus has created a very different playing field. Some players will need to shower at home before a game. Contact won't be allowed, and parents will be missing from the sidelines. Back together, but further apart than ever. <laughs> Clubs are going to extraordinary lengths to get kids back into the game, but it's not sport as we know it. In basketball, new guidelines mean high fives are out. Tip off replaced by rock, paper, scissors, and players have to shower and change before a game. Each code is planning how they'll make it work. Taking baby steps to make sure that people are safe. New South Wales winter sports desperate to return have come up with new training guidelines. In netball, every second court will be out of play to allow more space for spectators. In rugby league, players can touch the same football, but will have to wait to tackle until July, when it's hoped competition will resume. So far the direction has been to interpret the public health order yourself. Soccer parents are being encouraged to stay away from the sidelines. With some professional sports on the verge of returning and students returning to school with no social distancing, kids have been left wondering why their sports are any different. I think it's totally inconsistent. I, I don't know what the difference is. We're told that they can interact very safely. Um, just not sure why that can't happen on the, on the footy field on the weekend as well. Tom Saker, 7 News. An Aussie paramedic working on the virus front line in London has received a special hand delivered. Thank you. Not one, but six boxes of lamingtons personally brought to him by, you can see there, Australia's High Commissioner George Brandis. Nick's, uh, Nick Fitzpatrick from Dubbo could not wipe the smile off his face. It makes me very proud to be an Australian, to receive such a, such a gift, actually. It's just a nice gesture to tell them how much we appreciate them. And it did, we understand, share them around, which is good. All right, Sally's back now. Sal, good evening again. Have we seen the last of the rain? Well, Michael, there are still some showers about tonight with dangerous surf building along the coast at the moment. I'll have the full forecast next. Bateman's Bay Fire Brigade stood on top of that roof and wouldn't let this burn. All donate. People are amazing. Join Dr. Harry and see how our heartland is healing. You give me a second chance. New Better Homes, next on 7. Hi, I'm Jo from Westpac. We know what you want from your home loan changes over time. That's why we're here, to give you the best of both worlds, with the option to split your home loan. It means part of your loan is locked in, taking advantage of some of the lowest fixed interest rates in history. This can be as much or as little of your loan as you want. You'll know exactly how much you'll be repaying each month, giving you certainty 
which could come in handy if interest rates increase. You'll also get flexibility with a split loan since the other portion of your loan is under a variable rate. You'll be able to make additional repayments to pay off your home sooner should you come into some extra money or even read your money if you need to access funds for things like renovations. Rest assured, we're open for business and here to help. For more information, search Westpac Split Loan. If you have any symptoms of COVID-19, like fever, coughing, sore throat or shortness of breath, you should get tested. If we all do this, we will prevent outbreaks and together we will save lives. Is frequent heartburn interrupting your life, causing you to reach for short-term relief over and over again? There is a better way. Unlike antacids that often require multiple doses per day, Nexium 24 Hour provides longer lasting protection from frequent heartburn with just one tablet a day. Nexium 24 Hour provides round the clock protection. Live life less interrupted. Get Nexium 24 Hour for a great price at Chemist Warehouse. The next Garby Autumn Sale is on now. Save on a great range of quality furniture for a limited time. The next Garby Autumn Sale, on now. Sun Super's stress-tested investment strategies have delivered returns that have beaten the industry average over three, five, seven and ten years. Join our 1.4 million members and feel the strength of Sun Super. This year has been hard for all of us. Just imagine how much harder it is for homeless and vulnerable Australians. When you donate to Mission Australia, you're investing a seed of hope in Australia's most vulnerable. There's never been a more important time to support them. Donate now. Jimmy's doors are open for business for the hottest deals in home entertainment. Like this high sense 75 inch 4K smart TV for $19.95. And stock up on movies and TV shows with buy one, get one free on Blu-ray and 4K. Buy in store, online, click and collect or get it delivered. JP, you've done it again. The greatest war the world has ever seen. Brad Pitt leads a cast of stars. Watch out! Troy, tonight on 7. Her arm, trapped in the doors. See how quick thinking saved her life. The Extraordinary Pictures, 7 News, Monday. Tonight's 7 News headlines. Happy hours back with pubs, clubs and restaurants allowed up to 50 patrons from the 1st of June. The government's admitted a $60 billion blunder in its JobKeeper scheme. A five-year-old boy is fighting for life after being hit by a truck at Picton. And surfing champ Kelly Slater had a rough day in the surf, snapping his board at Avalon in the big swell. And Sally's back now. Sally, we're in for a cold, damp night. Yeah, we sure are, Michael. Showers are skirting along the coast right now with the mercury on the downward slide. Today, we only reached a top of 16 degrees, and that was after a low of just nine early this morning. Around Sydney suburbs, tops of pretty much 16 degrees for most of us today. It was a little bit cooler at Terry Hills, 14 degrees there. Overnight, some of the heaviest rainfall was around those southern suburbs, a widespread 40 to 50 millimetres seen, while the northern beaches picked up around 20 millimetres in the gauges. On the satellite, we do have that low just brewing off the east coast at the moment. That is whipping up gale force winds along parts of the coast and also dangerous seas. Also, a northwest cloud band is just feeding some of those showers across the northern parts of the state. Meanwhile in WA we're also watching out for a tropical cyclone off the coast at the moment which is pretty rare for this time of the year. Around the capitals tomorrow partly cloudy is the story for Brisbane 17 degrees there some showers in Canberra with a top of just 12. It should be mostly fun into Melbourne tomorrow showers at times 15 degrees Adelaide 16 and a sunny one in Perth with a top of 27 degrees. Now there is a severe weather alert out for those damaging winds they'll gust up to 90 kilometres an hour especially around the Illawarra and Royal National Park. Zooming into New South Wales, the bulk of the state will be sunny away from the coast tomorrow. We'll see some more snow forecast for Threadbow and Perisher. Temperatures tonight also dropping to freezing across the northern tablelands. Across Sydney's suburbs, wet and windy is the story. Showers in Cronulla, 16 degrees at Campbelltown expected. On the water tomorrow, we can expect some dangerous conditions with fairly big waves swell up to five metres, while the city will drop to 10 degrees tonight with tops of 17 degrees expected tomorrow. It will be a cloudy day with a few showers as well at times, delivering around 2 to 10 millimetres. 
Looking ahead, wet and windy is the story on Sunday. 18 degrees, the top in the city. 19 degrees in our west, same again on Monday. Now, the bulk of the wet weather on Tuesday will just be along those coastal areas. It'll be partly cloudy on Wednesday, tops of 20 degrees, and then we'll see sunny skies and warmer weather returning towards the end of the week. So a bit of a wet weekend ahead, but it won't last too long, Michael. That's OK. Rug up. It's fine weather for it. <laughs> Thank you, Sally. Well, that is 7 News for this Friday. We'll have updates for you throughout the evening. For now, though, I'm Michael Usher. From all of us here, thanks so much for your company. Have a great Friday night.